Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Father's Day to the fathers. We wish you well on this special day. For announcements this morning, we continue to have our collection for Ukrainian relief efforts during the first hymn, expanding, extending the table, our non-perishable food collection for wheat is an ongoing effort and that is taken on the first Sunday of the month, but feel free to bring items all through the month if you think of it. Keep our homebound members in your prayers, Ruth, Eunice, Art, and June. Church Council meets this Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. The German Christmas Market Committee will meet on Thursday, June 30th at 7 o'clock. Take me out to the ball game. Anybody interested? The Bravehearts are playing July 17th at 3 o'clock, and if you'd like to go, there's a sign-up list over on the table as you leave the sanctuary. Get pumped. This is a chance for us to show our team spirit for the United Church of Clinton. Are there any other announcements this morning? If not, we center ourselves, we prepare inside for the time of worship at the United Church of Clinton. We begin with the ringing of the bell and the time for centering. Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. As a deer longs for flowing streams of water, our souls reach out to seek our God. Where is our God? In the cleansing of the rain, in the refreshing of a pool, in the predictability of a faucet. With glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, our voices lift towards our God. Where is our God? In the melody of voices raised in concert, in the stillness of silence, in the cacophony of spontaneous praise. As deep calls to deep, we come to worship the living God. Where is our God? In the echoes of our prayers, in the reverence of our heads, in the hopes of raised faces. The Holy One is with us. And so let us now join in song. And our first moment together as we raise our voices is number 687 in our chalice hymnals, 687. In Christ there is no east or west. And Kate will play it once through for us, and then we will sing the four verses. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> Oh, 
Please join me in the prayer of the day. Holy wisdom, we hear you calling us to gather and to hope in your name. Ignite sacred courage in us to proclaim the good news of justice from the comfort of the sanctuary to the public witness of the city gates. Inspire a compelling vision of a gracious, beloved, and empowered community that propels us to confront inequities, challenge privilege, and participate in your creative work in our time. Renew our hope for humanity so that we might rejoice in this inhibited world and delight in our siblings. Amen. And now it is time for us to pass the peace of Christ with one another and feel free to wander. We will sing it twice through, Peace Be With You. Thank you, Kate. Today's first scripture is found in Psalm 42. As the deer pants for the streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will, I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan and the heights of Hermon from Mount Mizar. Deep, deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by my enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taught me, saying to me all day long, Where is my God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Please join with me in the prayer for transformation and new life. Holy and gracious God, fear seeks to be our constant companion. It stifles us with its overwhelming presence and prolific imagination. Fear surrounds us and blocks our vision in your path. Fear keeps us from picking up our cross as much as it suppresses our joy in you. Fear invites us to believe the easy lie rather than confronting the hard truths necessary for your kingdom to come. Too often we cast off your perfect love in favor of insidious fear. Forgive us for choosing fear when we could have you, your presence, and your way as our companion on our journey. Empower us to reject fear and all that fall complicit in dampening your truth. And a word for God's assurance. Romans 5, 1b-2 reminds us that we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. That grace promises the glory of transformation through the acknowledgement of need for it. New life awaits as hope, does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Receive the grace, embrace transformation, and enter the newness of life in which Christ fashions our struggles into character and hope. Amen. So I ask an easy question for the message for all God's children. How many of you have actually seen a deer in your lifetime? Everyone? Every one of us has seen a deer. And I don't know about you, but I kind of get excited when I see a deer. Do you? Yes. They're majestic animals, aren't they? And they're very, they, they seem very gentle to me and very kind and so forth. So when I drive home from the Grafton Public Library on Monday nights, there's a field in Boylston. And I'm always alert when I get to that intersection of Sewell Street and School Street. I don't know if you know Boylston at all. But there's an intersection there where the field is just very vast. And I'm always honing in and looking for a deer. And sometimes I see them there. Sometimes there's a big group of them, which is really exciting for me. And other times, this is funny, when I don't see a deer in that field on Monday nights when I'm driving home late at night. I see them on Route 70. You have to be very careful <laughs> driving Route 70 between Boylston and Clinton in the evening times. You have to be on guard. So I just want to lift up the image of a deer this morning, the gentleness the kindness, if you will, the majestic nature of that being, thirsting for water we are told about in today's scripture, first scripture. I want you to think about a deer thirsting for water as we thirst for the love of God. Let's be in prayer. Dear God, as a deer pants for water, so our souls long for you. We lift up images of deer and the thirst that they have for life. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
and to continue with the, the deep thoughts about ideas, um, we are now going to join together to sing as the deer. I, I invite you to remain either sitting or standing, whichever you are most comfortable with. The words are in the bulletin and they will be on the screen for our virtual worshippers. And you'll see that as we begin to sing, the first line is the direct quote from our first scripture reading this morning. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. So we'll have Kate play it. It is verse and refrain, and there are three verses in all. So thank you, Kate. We have several people and situations we are thinking of this morning and lifting up in prayer. Again, the people of Ukraine, the Tenkadi family, Art, June, Ruth, Eunice, Gloria Pop, Harold, the Dickerson family, those affected by gun violence, Jackie, Linda, Jan, Jan's Bob, remembrances of the fabulous four and for friends Candy, Marianne, Vic and Becky, Linda, Brandon, and more. Are there people that you can think of this morning we should add to this list? Yes, virtual people. Virtual people. Um, first of all, this came in uh, from via messenger to me uh, from Laura Troyosi. It's a joy. Uh, she feels um, so cared for and uplifted. She received our card and our gift, and she wanted to have me raise that as a joy during this time in worship. Um, there's also another joy. Um, this is from Kelly Turcott. Um, Oscar, one of Kelly's children, made, a balloon, made balloon animals on the last day of school and Kelly saw many students leaving 
with balloon <laughs> animals. <laughs> I have a personal joy. Um, my eldest grandson, he's at the uh, Maritime Academy, just finished his freshman year, and he managed to pass chemistry and calculus, which he was <laughs> petrified he would not pass. And he did it by literally working his little tail off to do it and couldn't believe when he got the results. So it's a joy for him. Calculus and? and ke calculus and chemistry. This is Ryan. Chemistry. And his name is? Ryan, known as Rye Guy. Rye Guy. Any other joys, concerns, glimpses of God? If not, let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Parent God, we lift up those fathers who have gone before us, and for those still with us, for those of us who have had healthy relationships with our fathers, we give you thanks for them. We offered our word of thanksgiving for those men in our lives that have served as father figures. Thank you for all men who have made a difference in our lives. Thinking in other directions, as a sister in Christ has written, I lift up the following words. Gracious God, as I make my way, I long for a map, a compass, a lantern to help me choose the right path, find the right place, reach the right height. But the guidance I need is not mine to hold. The place I seek is not outside myself. Send your light and truth. Those will guide me. We think this day and celebrate and lift up in concern. Mostly joys today. A joy for a card and gift received and the feelings of appreciation because of that. For Oscar making balloon animals and sharing with them during the last day of school, we give you thanks for the joy he experienced in doing that. We thank you that the Rye guy passed his calculus and chemistry exams as he pursues a degree through the Maritime Academy. Yay, Rye Guy. Yeah. <laughs> and we lift up all those named this morning in prayer. We ask that you surround each person with your grace and your love. May the path we seek this Father's Day be in celebration of your presence in our lives. Amen. Amen. The second scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Galatians, the third chapter, verses 23 to 29. It's entitled, Children of God, before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. So the law was our guardian until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. 
If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So ends this reading. Try this one on for your moment of holy humor. Bear with me this day. In honor of Father's Day, here we go. One day shortly after the birth of their new baby, a spouse had to go out to do some errands, so the proud papa stayed home to watch his wonderful new son. Soon after the spouse left, the baby started to cry. The father did everything he could think of to do, but the baby would not stop crying. Finally, the dad got so worried, he decided to take the baby to the doctor. After the doctor listened to the father and all that he had done to get the baby to stop crying, the doctor began to examine the baby's ears, chest, and then down to the diaper area. When he undid the diaper, he found the diaper was indeed full. Here's the problems, the doctor said. He needs a change. The father was very perplexed. But the diaper package, he replied, says it's good for up to 10 pounds. Oh. 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 Poor cats. <laughs> I do believe the fathers of this congregation and our virtual watchers who are fathers are much smarter than that. <laughs> so as we sigh, <laughs> let us go to God in prayer. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Amen. I'd like to visit this Galatians text that is so full of imagery, but first I want to briefly look at the first reading, the psalm reading, which our liturgy focuses on this day. Panting for water as if a deer, thirsting for the living God, Tears are food for days and nights, pouring out one's soul. When was the last time, think in your mind, the last time you had a good cry? I mean a really good cry. When life's journey seems too much, we go to God in tears. Sometimes we taste those salty tears come down, and we drink in that odd, salty flavor. A colleague of mine, Chris Marichuk, writes, Have you ever cried so hard that you got dehydrated? I mean that literally. You get a pounding headache and swollen face. Eyes are strained, mouth parched, yet fed with salty fluid. In their despair, the writer of Psalm 42 takes sips of hope from the well of memories. Times when they poured out their soul in praise and thanksgiving when they drank full cups of God's greatness. We need God to rehydrate our souls with some of that living water, just as they have done before. Not so that we can cry more, but so that we can cry out 
with praise. Until then, we sip from the memories of hope. So ends my colleague Chris's written reflection. I love the phrase, rehydrate our souls. How do we rehydrate our souls? It is in pouring out our feelings and emotions that we can feel, that we can empty our souls in order to fill it. After filling it with thoughts of reflection and gratitude, we may be able to pause in awe and continue on our path. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey is a quote quite often used in UCC Church's welcoming statements. We are embraced where we are and where we are heading. That is refreshing to me, just as waters are refreshing to deer and to other creatures that our psalm reading refers to. Being embraced for where we are heading is reassuring. Drink of the streams that provide a wellspring of spiritual nourishment. Skipping from one scripture to another, we visit the Galatians text. In it we hear, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Think about that of being a slave to someone, having been held captive instead of free. Tears most likely have been shed, freedom, has been held off. And we collectively forget that we are all one. Today we observe a new holiday, Juneteenth. Some have celebrated it for years, the end of slavery in our country. Yet only now it is being brought to the forefront. We see images of broken chains and it makes our hearts sing. This is a great opportunity for teaching moments for children. I overheard a mom in the children's room at the library I work for answering a question of a child concerning Juneteenth, a teachable moment in celebrating the end of slavery and the past of times that are best left behind in the past. Moments lifted up in song that sing of deliverance and finding a more wholesome future, we hear. Songs that we hear of in this service this morning. In God's presence is the theme for this morning's meditation. In God's presence of emptying out and being filled from the psalm reading, and in God's presence of being set free from the Galatians text. Where are you in your journey of faith this morning? Feeling like you could break out in tears at any moment? Feeling filled with the streams of God's overflowing love? Feeling captive to emotions that enslave? feeling celebratory that you are meant to be free from honestly being in God's presence. There are a whole variety of emotions stemming from the honesty of one's soul. May we reach out to God and be present to God where we are emotionally, wherever we are emotionally this morning. May it be so for you, and for me, amen.
call to offering, I remind you again, the bins for offering are to my side. Those of you watching virtually may send a check to the church office or give by going online to our website. The call to offering. The gifts of God come generously and abundantly. We hold, nurture, and amplify them as they are entrusted to our care. We respond faithfully by sharing them for the good of community and creation. In this act of faith and trust, we transform our resources of time, talent, and finances into the good news in the world. join with me in the prayer of dedication. We give you thanks, O God, for our help, for the abundance of the gifts you have planted in us as seeds that we may share in bloom. May these offerings be received and magnified in your glory. Our final song that we join together this morning is Lift Every Voice and Sing, which is number 631 in the Chalice Hymnal, 631, and the words will appear for our virtual worshipers. Um, this particular piece of music was chosen especially for this Sunday in celebration of Juneteenth. It was written by two brothers, uh, John Rosamond Johnson and his brother, um, you can see this at the bottom, James Weldon Johnson. And it is referred to in the music literature and other literature as the Negro Anthem. It was first sung live in 1900 by a choir of 500 students at the segregated Florida Baptist Academy. You will hear it a lot nowadays. Both these gentlemen were extremely talented and did in fact write operas together, but it is a very special piece and it is a great pleasure to sing it together and lift our voices on this particular date, Juneteenth. So, lift every voice and sing. Kate will play it once through for us. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> Steady feet have not a weary feet come to 
May peace be with you as you confront lies with truth and fear with hope. May the abiding one strengthen you to stand in truth and hope. May the living water refresh you with new streams of righteousness. May wisdom be the voice you follow now as you go out into the world encouraged and emboldened and renewed. Thank you.